that one wobbled him. Drops him. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner from the mecca of mixed martial arts, Las Vegas. Here are your hosts, Heidi Fang, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Colbert, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Oh, yeah, you know what that sound is. It means it is the beginning of the MMA Fight Corner, an all-web special today. The hinges are going to fly off the door. I can guarantee you that a little bit for your host, Joey Varner. Filthy Phil Divine and Heidi, the uh, multiple hits hit list fang. <laughs> <laughs> the hits from the bong fang. That's right, hits from the bong fang. I'm Dave Carney. Guys, Tuesday here in Las Vegas, we're preempted on Sports 920. We've got something going on. I don't even know what it is. You know what it is? It's unfucking censored. <laughs> That's right, we are. We are uncensored. That means we can actually let it uh, all hang out. And for the MMA world, that could be good and or bad news. We're going to see uh, how this goes. But after this is all said and done, I I think we're going to have a new perspective on Tuesday mornings on the MMA Fight Corner coming out of Las Vegas. Guys, we're still going to have a really big show today. We're going to be possibly getting an interview uh, with World Series of Fighting Bantamweight Brandon Hempelman. So we're going to be waiting to talk to Brandon. Apparently, when Heidi was putting together this interview, guys, Brandon says that after his loss, he's got something to talk about. There's, there's something that he wants to talk about. After his loss. Now, I, I had said a couple of things. I was thinking maybe that, you know, that uh, deer elk horn, you know, he's going to say somebody was using it. Or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, he was told to take a dive by, you know, some <laughs> bookie coming out of Ohio. I don't know. What, what could he talk about? I don't know. But he says he does have something to get off his chest. We did see, yeah, he got beat pretty badly in his last fight. But what we did see out of him was a tremendous amount of heart. And we saw that the guy is, is a fighter. So, uh, I, yeah, I want to know what he has to say. Dude, yeah, he, he was first, end, end of the first round, bloodied up, looked like he just got bitch slapped by Freddy Krueger. Yes. End of the second <laughs> round, looked, looked like Paul Bunyan took, a, took that old axe to his leg. He's hopping around on one leg, blood streaming down his face, making the, yeah, fuck you face, you yeah. can't put me down. Like I loved it, dude. I thought we were actually going to see um, the crane kick. Because of the fact, not that he was going to attempt it, just because he couldn't stand on that one leg. He had his best flamingo impression going the whole fight. No, he was hot. It was hot. It was insane. He's thinking about like Ralph Macchio, and he's he's going back in the annals. And he was like, "If only I could have gotten Mr. Miyagi here tonight, everything would have worked out fine." Right? Uh, he would have cleared that leg up. <laughs> oh, you were <laughs> simultaneous. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready for a horrible joke? Okay. Oh, you know who his new sponsor it's is? It's Tuesday. <laughs> you know who his new sponsor is? Who? Ooh. I hop. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Well, what? Yeah. That was horrible. I, you know what? I, 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 he did warn us. He I, let I, us I should know. have had something queued up in here for us. I apologize. Joey, next bad joke Tuesday, as Heidi said, uh, I'll make sure to have a couple of sound effects for you. Well, you, you know what, man? There's going to be three or four more coming in the next four or five minutes. Oh, that's so, great. That's so just great. be ready. Well, I tell you what, guys. Uh, outside of all the unbelievably hilarious shit we're going to cover today, because we might do uh, this week in high, high MMA history with Phil Devine, we're going to see uh, if we can get Phil to, to do a little something and make a little fun of this week in MMA history. But we're still going to break down UFC Fight Night 27. Uh, the Condit Campman Fight 2 is coming up, guys, unbelievably tomorrow night. So August 28th, uh, the fight is going to be starting uh, actually on Facebook. Then it's going to be on Fox Sports 2. Then it moves over to Fox Sports 1. So if you're like me and don't go on Facebook and don't have Fox, how am I supposed to get access to this fight? Do I get, can, I, can we still watch it at Buffalo Wild Wings? Oh, where, are you, sure. where are we hearing about I'm this? I'm sure it'll be on at Buffalo Wild Wings okay, or at cool. any, any local pub or, or casino area bar. But, um, you know, come on by. No, so here's come on by the house come tomorrow by night. House. You can watch. Okay, cool. I was going to say, we'll let you watch. I, I, I don't he's have that issue. I have five. He's got five dollars sliders and everything. He was just like, but wait a second, aren't these White Castle uh, microwave murder burgers? burgers? Yeah. They don't have murder burgers out here on the West Coast. You can buy the them in the Coast, store, man. What's a murder burger? White Castle? Oh, I know White Castle. Oh, it's murder burger. They're inside, so they make them all liquidy, and yeah. then you it's can't gross. sit still for like probably White, a White hour White Castle after destroys eating. the stomach, especially after you know a night of heavy drinking, and then you go pick up a crave case. Sure. Yeah, that's not never right, good. But you know White what? Castle's nasty though. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, of like, course it's nasty. But here, here's the great and thing. And Murder Burger. Castle and Chick-fil-A. It, Chick, people are like cracked out for Chick-fil-A. I'm like, are you serious? Listen, I have those J- stringy Jumbo little... Jack, yes. Jumbo Jack are, are 99 cents chicken sandwiches from Jack in the Crack, which I haven't eaten in five years, you know what I'm saying, but are better than Chick-fil-A. And I know there are some people out there like, oh my god, oh, he's fucking crazy. Like, that's sacrilegious. No. Let's be honest, they taste like shit. Well, see, and I thought Chick fil A at first when I heard they were like all anti gay, I thought it was because I was going in there to, you know, eat some chick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this, this must be what they're going to serve me a little cutty. But and then I find out it's just some fucking boring chicken, and I'm like, this, this is no just good. It's a nasty piece of chicken on I, bun. I, there's I, no I, lettuce I, I, with a pickle. No fucking man. One of my favorite <laughs> things is what that's my same. old roommates used to call Heidi's late night dumb shit food. I take <laughs> It's in the refrigerator, dude, and I make some crazy stuff like bacon waffles. Bacon waffles, yeah, but see now that's, that's, some that's, bacon that's okay. bits and put some cheese and stuff in there. I don't know. I just create things. I looks create. like looks like Heidi was doing a little high history with Phil before right. he came in. Put here. some <laughs> grape jelly on it. I'm happy. Put well, you know, grape jelly on it. Like <laughs> crazy. Like, like if you if you took the grape jelly, the 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 the, uh, the what do they call waffles, the bacon, threw some mustard and pickles on there, then that'd be crazy. Then I wonder if you are pregnant or not. Because that's oh, like a crazy oh, pregnant. No, no, food. no. We don't speak these things. No p words here. And huh? <laughs> but you know, All right, so we can go, fights. Can we talk about some fights. Some yeah, fights. seriously. Yeah, I, you, you know what's wrong, wrong with you? Let, let me ask you something. You guys, are, you guys are allowed to curse for like three three minutes, and you're just like completely off topic. Well, it relieves the tension yeah, they have. It, it goodness, I was going to say, well, you know, because I've been noticing how handsome Joey looks, and a lot of that, though. Thank See? God. See? Thank God, due to Vita Heaven LV. Now we're going to talk to Doctor Burke. I think later on the program, and Phil mentioned getting super drunk and, and what you have to do about that. What you have to do is call our friends at HangoverHeaven.com seven four nine thirty three hundred before you go out and get Chick-fil-A because it's far. They don't have one in Vegas because they won't come here, but if you're going to go get Chick-fil-A, be sure to hit up Hangover Heaven first, uh, 749-3300. Now, here's my high moment of the day. Uh, have you been recording this on Sam Broadcaster as well or, or on your little side uh, dish? Yeah, this is Fully recorded. Okay, gentlemen. good. We're going to piece it together with the board, which I started about a minute ago. So it's going to be a good thank. Thankful we, we've got this, uh, you know, double double check. It's like State Farm or the Call discount. Me high frequency. That's thing. right. It's like the discount double check here. You know, get get it on. You're too mic'd up here. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. See, right this now. is because What's it's between on? us right here. We don't, even need, we don't even need to involve you. All right, you guys want to talk some fights? Yes. Let's talk some fights. We've got UFC Fight Night 27, Fox Sports 1 tomorrow. What do you want to talk about? You want to break down the main Call fight? Me Kevin. Dude, Con- yeah, Con- 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 Campman, man. The I mean, ducks. Th- th- this fight, the first fight was so was so good. I think the second fight's going to be even better. I mean, when you look at that, that was Carlos's first fight into the UFC. C- Martin Campman was his kind of his his welcome uh, wagon. That was Campman only his his second fight. Right? Wasn't his only his second no. or third fight at welterweight? That was his first fight at welterweight. That's what I mean. Yeah, oh, yeah his yeah, first yeah. fight at welterweight. His second first fight at welterweight. And so Conrad's first in, from it, the WEC. From, yeah, from the WEC. And if you look at that fight, Campman used a lot of his wrestling. Okay. Carlos d- really, I think if you look at the stats, right, didn't he have a higher striking and higher... But he, but he, he did he, outstrike him. He yeah. outstruck him, and even from the bottom. And you've always seen that about Carlos Condit. Works a lot from the bottom. He never uh, never stops. Uh, much different fighter now, I think, than the last fight with Campman. So I'm really interested to see how it goes. Although you know when what? I spoke with him at uh, the Boys Town event that we had during fight week, I asked him what was the key to this fight and, and actually coming out with the W this time and he said that in his last two fights obviously GSP and Hendricks he said that he felt the big differential was still his wrestling so he's made a concerted effort to work on that this time around and I think that hopefully could be the difference for him if you know he could put it all together that's exactly what I was going to say though is that the the, the 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 key like lining factor in all his losses has been the wrestling now when you go through two training camps back to back to fight two of the best wrestlers in mixed martial arts and George St. Pierre and Johnny Hendricks. It does a lot for your anti-wrestling, you know, for your wrestling defense. It brings up your wrestling IQ to a much, much higher level. Um, Will that be enough with this last training camp, the more wrestling training he just got in to stifle the takedowns of Martin Kamen? Because at the same time, uh, uh, Carlos Khan has been working on his takedown defense. Martin Kamen's only been getting better at his takedown offense. And I think he's wrestling offensively might have improved more than Condit's defensively. I still think for Condit, you know, the key for this one is is he's got to hurt Kamen. He, he's got to, he can't just land punches or kicks, you know, or defend takedowns. He needs to catch him. He needs to rock him. 
Camp, he needs to damage him. You know, that's been the, the, the key thing with people who have beat Martin Campman. You know, I think it's four out of the six losses have come by, by KO. You uh-huh. know, he's, he, he's, been, he's been KO'd, and for Carlos Condon to get the W, he's got to hurt Martin. It's going to be tough to do, especially when the wrestling is a threat, because it's hard for you to sit down on your punches, you know, really find the range and land some devastating punches, kicks, and knees when you have to worry about the constant threat of a takedown. Yeah, uh, if you look, Campman, actually, he's never been submitted. All of his losses have come by knockout or by decision. Some of them bad decisions, obviously. We've seen the Diego Sanchez. But, um, yeah, this is going to be a really, really interesting fight. And you talked about how Campman's got to get on top. Uh, I mean, Condit's got to go after Campman and rock him and, and finish him there. Because that's another thing about Campman is Campman does get rocked early and has been notorious for being a slow starter. But when he comes back and finds his groove... That's when he's most dangerous. I mean, look at the Ellenberger fight. He got dropped, got bloodied up, busted nose, came back, gets the knockout of the night. All right, And then he's losing to uh, Tiago Alves and comes back and gets the submission of the night. You know, So this is a guy who you can't, you, you got to finish him. If you rock him, you have to finish him. You cannot let him gain his composure. Yeah, I think Heidi agrees with you on that. She's nodding in, in approval. Well, well, yeah, and in addition, it's a big thing for Condit, you know, um, I mean, for Campman. If he can upset Condit here, he could jump to that number two spot up in the division. It's huge. Yeah, no, it is huge, and I think that actually the closer we get to this fight card, the more intrigue I kind of find uh, in some of the fights. And, and the next one I want to talk about, guys, is uh, the Cerrone fight versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Now, uh, Rafael comes in uh, riding a four-fight win streak right now, and, of course, Cerrone lost his last fight uh, to Anthony Pettis in, in a TKO. He well, actually, he came, came back. back he yeah. Oh, he came, he came back and won against uh, Nunes. 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 In a very, um, in a not, right. at, yeah, fight. not as exciting as I was hoping, and I think you saw the tentativeness with Donald Cerrone in that fight. That was the first, first time Donald Cerrone comes into a fight where he's coming off a knockout loss. He had never been stopped before, and or at least by, by punches. Oh, he's been, God, he'd been yeah. submitted before, right. but he'd never been stopped in that way before, and I think you saw the tentativeness that he came into that fight, especially with a guy like Nunes, who hits so hard. Uh, Dos Anjos, I don't think, hits as hard as Nunes, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But Dos Anjos is no joke. This is going to be a very tough fight and a very interesting fight to see what happens at 155. Yeah, yeah. Cerrone needs a win in a big way. You know, he was... He was you know the 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 man. He was coming in with a lot of hype, you know, and then he get, he gets derailed by Nate Diaz. He picks up a couple wins, picks up a loss, and is kind of bouncing back and forth. And he's really one of those guys who's who's either in that title contention race or just outside of it. But he, you know, if he wants to get back in there, he needs a win tonight, and he's doing impressively or tomorrow night. And from what I heard, um, he hasn't been training as much with Jackson. Well, he spent the last month up in Colorado, from what I understand. Yeah. I think he does that uh, on he, occasion. He's from Colorado originally, and, and I know he trains when his jiu-jitsu coach up there is uh, is Carlos Cavallo up in Vail as a jiu-jitsu school. It's where Matt Brown went and did his camp as well. Yeah, but like from what I heard, he's been spending less time at Jackson's than normal. Um, and I, it's, he, he was always the one, the, the factor in Jackson's camp that was so different than everybody else, too. You know, Jackson's fighters for the last few years have been gotten that bad rep of just going in there and, and point fighting and winning your fights. And Cerrone was always the exact opposite. And he was never, and he's been very honest about it, never a, a good listener when it came to listening to his corner. So I, I think it, it's... It's, it's kind of interesting. I want to see what happens with him. That was something that I spoke with him about, actually, when I spoke with him at 160, was that he wanted to make an effort to actually take in his corner while he's fighting. He said he gets often distracted, and he gets into his own head, and that he just goes into his own autopilot, and he kind of blocks out his corner. Well, in the last fight, if you noticed, uh, I think it was right at the end of the first round with Nunes, he had a takedown. And then Jackson said, at the end of that round, that's what I need from you, more takedowns. And sure enough, in that next round, so when he went in and landed a couple more. So that ended up maybe being the edge in that fight, despite the fact that he outstruck, you know, KJ all around in every level. Hence but his last fight being boring. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can I say that out loud? <laughs> hey, so well, we're we're we going to hope won. for more fireworks uh, tomorrow night's fight. It should still be great. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Court McGee fight. We talked to Court last week. Uh, we're going to break that down again with Robert Whitaker. Again, more action coming up right here on the uncensored, unfettered, and unfriendly MMA Fight Corner. Stay tuned. Living in the
Las Vegas is great. Dealing with the desert heat is a challenge to us all, especially if you're an athlete. When you're training or exercising regularly, your body loses tons of water and electrolytes and can be very hard to get back in a short period of time. This is when you turn to the pros at Vita Heaven. Created and tested by Dr. Jason Burke, Vita Heaven can reinfuse your body with everything from B12 and high dose vitamin C to full scale performance hydration. Keep yourself performing at the highest level. Go to VitaHeavenLV.com. MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. On the all-new Sports 920. The Game. The Game. All right, welcome back in to the MMA Fight Corner. Not on the all-new Sports 920. The Game this afternoon. We are doing a live stream for you. We're going to post this on YouTube, and we're going to put a fairly succinct version up on our amazing website, MMAFightCorner.com for your host, Joey Varner, Phil Devine, Heidi Fang. I'm Dave Carney, and in case you missed us, that's, you know, pretty much par for the course because we've only had two live streams so far, but that's all right. Like I said, we're going to post this back later on on our website. We've got to say what's up, though, to our newest sponsor here on the MMA Fight Corner, going to be coming on in earnest starting next week, and that is Brooks Brothers Bail Bonds. So they are, guys, offering very special services to militaries, uh, veterans, family members, and those who have, I guess, been either active or retired in the military. They're doing some very special services for those folks. So you can hit up, up online at uh, brooksbail.com. You think they can help out Bradley Manning? They probably could. <laughs> I think so. Uh, these guys might be able that to... That dude them. is getting fucked. And you know what? What for? I mean, did you, the, the did guy... Did you read his, his letter to the president? No, I did not read oh, yeah, that. Oh, it was pretty good. Okay, well, now, if the letter to the president says anything, you know, dangerous... Just like, then, hey, man, I signed up to help this country in light of 9-11, you know, and that's all I wanted to do. And while I'm on the inside, I see, you know... It, proof over and over again that we're slaughtering civilians and torturing and doing everything we're not supposed to do. I didn't have much option. You know, I, I thought that was what being an American was about. You know, it went on and on and on. Yeah. But it, it, it was good. Well, it, you know, and listen, that's such a great, a great topic because Ron Paul, actually, who I disagree with on so many, so many things, uh, but agree with him on, on a couple, uh, has been... I figured you'd be a Ron Paul guy. You know what? There is certain things about Ron Paul. The, the unfortunate part is he becomes a very regular politician in a lot of cases, too, and uh, that's where I, I don't like him. And his but, son is an absolute train wreck and we won't go there but ron paul was posting up a video about this and saying like you know we need to really support this guy uh because he's putting his life on the line and putting his 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 everything on the line to really expose some of the things about the country now to me surprised not at all this sounds like a, a normal day in american history uh go back and check out how we acquired this massive continent that we did and then we'll restart the discussion on what is appropriate behavior and how we choose to handle that at the same point i think there is something to be said about keeping it under wraps if possible. So it's a very interesting balance that we have to keep. It's, it's a weird world that we live in It's now. absolutely amazing how much is just stricken from the, the history books in, yes. this, in this Or country. how many how many lies were taught. Oh, my up. God. It's unbelievable. It's Seriously, it's a scary thing. And that's why, like I've always said, hey, listen, I love my country. Sure. I love America. Do not get me wrong, but I seriously question what goes on in our government. I am not a fan of the government what? of anything they do. And and not that this is on an exact same topic, but if you guys haven't seen Joe Rogan questions everything, please go out and watch that show because there are some things, you know, the Bigfoot. I don't give a shit about Bigfoot, all right? And if anyone who sits there and they're like one of those squash hunters, you deserve to be raped by any animal that finds you in the woods, okay? A bear masturbation all over your face. If you do find one, I hope it deep throats you and it comes out your stomach. But, but some, some of like the what other stuff Tyson said about Sarah Palin and Glenn Rice. <laughs> some of the other stuff's absolutely amazing, and that you you watch on there, and yeah. you do know that there are so many cover-ups with the government, so much shady shit. It's just the way it is. Well, and it's so. Here's the thing: it's so prevalent that it can't even be surprising. So when I hear stuff, it it becomes the great non-surprise. Okay, and like I say, that's the formation of this great United States. Which you're right. I've lived abroad, and I appreciate what we have here. We have clean streets, we have toilets, we've got all the great stuff that we've come to know and love. Fast food restaurants and all the rest. Right. At the same point, if we're not honest with ourselves about how it is that we invented this particular kind of a country. 
we are always going to succumb to this great shock and awe, like, oh my gosh, I mean, you know, go find a Native American on a reservation, ask them what they think about your, your United States government. See how they feel about that. Well, that, that's the problem, is that most of us living here in America, and it's, it, it, we, we enjoy its freedom, we enjoy its liberties, but we also live in this, like, uh, kind of the cloud dream world where we think, you know, we're the good guys and everyone, it's love, peace, and happiness, and, you know, we're here to help the rest of the world, but really, you know, uh, since our incession, you know, the, the our attitude has been like, fuck you, if you don't do it the way you want it, we're going to take it, we're going to kill you, we're going to rape and pillage, and do it, and that's really been the way, like, the government, the military has operated, Yes. where the citizens are kind of like, though, yes. they're, they're blind to it, and they're blind to it because the media, because the stories that are told, because the history books, I mean, who remembers, who remembers, like, growing up, and, it, and it's, like, Thanksgiving week, and you do the yeah. play with, like, everyone's friends oh, with the yeah. Indians, oh, yeah. and, and listen, you draw, all, like, the, the turkey hand thing, you, your hand is a turkey, but, and, and, but it's all, it's all fun in games, you know, and everyone's like, like and we found out, no, 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 we gave them blankets with yeah. smallpox. Well, we, we slaughtered them. We, we raised them. Killed everyone. Everyone. One of the few mothers in the world that was actually not like that. She was like, you won't read about this, but those people were murdered. They were murdered but, by Chris R. Columbus. And then she was and naming she, all the votes. She's so truly <laughs> right. And, and not for nothing, okay, by today's standards, and this is really a touchy subject, but by today's standards, and we really, people, need to get back to talking fights. Yes. But, we are talking <laughs> fights. Fights for freedom. <laughs> well, that, that, if you think about the way this country was founded, yep. based on today's definition, the um, original American Revolutionary War well, was basically terrorism. Uh, uh, what do you mean? It was basically. terrorism. Here's the, here's it the was thing. terrorism. Here, here's the thing, and, I'll, and I'll tell you what. It wasn't even so much rebels, and we're going to end this because otherwise we're going to be all investigated at the end of the night. So here's the thing. At the end of the day, most of the people that signed the Declaration of Constitu you know, the Constitution and all the Declaration of Independence were governors or statesmen from England. Most of them were. I think 85% of them were. It becomes very easy. You're from New York, right? You're from upstate uh, California. We know how gangbangers work. Now, if you've got <laughs> capital regime in California that can't have capital regime in New York have any real way to get at him, guess what he says? Fuck you, I can steal from these people all by myself. And that is really, truly, and honestly the only thing that happened is that the gangsters over here who were part of their big gang just said, you know what, boss? Stick it up your ass. We can steal from them all by ourselves. Now, the reason the whole revolution started, George Washington, real quick, biggest whiskey distiller in the United States of America when they imposed the molasses tax. He said, Boston Tea Party, I'm coming after. He was the only person that could afford to throw an army against the British. He aligned himself with the French, and the rest is history. And yes, we sit here and talk about terrorists. We are the largest nation of self-promoting terrorists that has ever yeah, but you know ben what's here. good about George Washington? He made smoked great weed. weed. Yeah, <laughs> smoked weed. He used to come home. Martha would have a fat <laughs> girl. She was a hip, uh, hip chick. <laughs> All right. Well, I tell you what. We digress. We're going to get back into some of the great American gladiator blood sport people in cages getting themselves beaten until they can't do this anymore, but they are the top athletes in the world. Last week, we talked, guys, to Court McGee. Court McGee is going to be fighting Robert Whitaker coming up on UFC Fight Night 27 uh, tomorrow night. Real quick, we talked to Court. He seems like he's got some confidence in a game plan going in. You know, Whitaker's a very talented fighter. They both have impressive records. Let's recap this again and, and start off with Joey. What are your thoughts coming into this fight, and do you think anything will change by tomorrow? No, you know, Court McGee looked phenomenal his last fight, his drop to welterweight. He was light. He was quick. He had cardio. He had punches and bunches. He set records, I think, for throwing the amount of punches. And that's exactly what he needs to do in this fight. Um, I think he needs to use that movement. He showed a lot of movement, a lot of footwork on his toes, in and out. And it was all off a very, very busy jab, flowing with weapons after the jab. Jab, jab, one, two, three, jab, 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 kick, jab, punch, jab, kick, you know. By staying active like that, staying mobile in and out and keeping that that mobility with with attacks varying from from punches to kicks and kicks to punches but working off that jab it's really hard for a guy like Whitaker who likes to do the spinny flashy set up very explosive stuff to plant and explode with something so I think McGee needs to stay mobile and he needs to kind of pretty much do damn near what he did against Josh Deer but also hands up 
chin down, elbows in, and keep your eyes on that chest waiting for that tricky shit. Because if you, as long as you stay composed, hands high, elbows in, chin down, while you're punching, while you're kicking, while you're striking, there's not a lot of openings for your opponent to exploit with tricky shit. But if you start letting your defense slide a little while you're engaging, that's where the guy like this will catch you with a spinning hook kick or, or just something devastating. Yeah, he's got to keep Whitaker guessing. Got to keep him guessing, not understand, not know where he's coming from next. And, uh, you know, but Whitaker's a, a finisher. You know, he's had 11 fights. He's finished 10 of them. And not just by knockout. He's got submission skills, too. He's, he's an, a very good all-around fighter. This, I think, uh, is going to be one of those fights where uh, it's going to be a lot better than people are expecting. I think people look at this card. They really do. If you look at this card, there's not a lot of big names on it. But there's some important fights. And I think this Court McGee-Robert Whitaker fight is, is really a good, important fight. And I, McGee's never been knocked out. Never yeah. been. Never been, yeah. And I think you really made a key point there, Joey, when you mentioned the footwork. I think in this fight, being that they both came from that karate style background and then they learned wrestling, that they both really need to work on their footwork in this fight as a key to winning it. That'll definitely be a major, major role for sure. Yeah, good stuff. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I look at this, and I, sometimes I wonder when a guy uh, makes a drop down in weight like uh, Court McGee did. You know, does that affect you? And I mean, Joey, you're you're a fighter here. We're all athletic in some way, but as a fighter, does that have any long term effect? Do you think that plays to an advantage for him? What do you think about his body style? You know, and the weight difference between middleweight, welterweight stuff like that man you know it's a case-by-case -case scenario for some guys it definitely affects you you know it, 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 they, it, it can it can drain you it can deplete you it can make you weak and susceptible susceptible to punches for other guys though it's just a lifestyle change it's where they actually should have been their whole career they were carrying a lot more fat sure. maybe a lot more muscle than they actually needed in the division they they reevaluate stuff they look at their body tech they look at their diet their training they change it up and they find it's it's easy you know a guy like martin Cameron, martin spent the first half of his career at middleweight and he was a small middleweight Nate Marquardt same thing he spent most of his career at middleweight <clears throat> and these guys were both middleweights that were 190 295 pounds mm -hmm. which isn't big for middleweights and now they've made successful drops well can't be more than Marquardt yeah. but but they've done a great job being being welterweights uh, we watched the Campman Condit one fight last night and it's really interesting that you go there about the weight with uh, Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan were talking about how much bigger Condit is than Campman and how Campman is technically a small welterweight. And then there, but and then Rogan's like, yeah, he is, but the dude was beating people at middleweight, you know. <laughs> so and it, yeah. it, you really do see instances of this. Look, people were telling Frankie Edgar for the longest of time, "Hey, you need to drop to featherweight. You are not a lightweight." Right. Then he goes out and he wins the lightweight title, has six defenses or five defenses, and then they're like, "Now, now he drops," and he's like, "Oh man." People were right. And he was being yeah, so was stubborn about it. <laughs> he was so stubborn about it. No, and actually I talked to his coach, Mark Henry, at the last World Series of Fighting uh, uh, event. Um, had a great, long, long conversation with him. And he said, honestly, you know, Frank, Frankie's now only walking around at 150, 152. He could mm -hmm. make 135 easy. That's really where he thinks he should be. He should end up. Well, speaking of guys dropping in weight, we have Kelvin Gastelum making his welterweight debut on this card also. I'm very excited for that fight, although I did want to see him be tested against Paulo Tiago. I'm a little sad that that's not happening, <laughs> that it, we are getting a Brian Melancone, but hey. That I think this is a more dangerous fight. Yeah, I think Tiago yeah. stylistically Sleeper. was a good was a good fight for him because stylistically, uh, Tiago, aside from the the, the the cost check knockout, he doesn't have a lot of pop and he's, swick. It was he, just those two guys. Yeah, yeah. He's and he's you know he's dangerous on the ground, but he's someone that a good wrestler can take down and grind out and control. Melikon, he's tricky. He's a, he's a good wrestler. He's got heavy heavy hands. You know who expected them to, to do what he did to uh, was it Seth Pazinski last Zinsky, fight right. after two years off. Too. Yeah, he, he, two years off. No, I, no one expected that because Zinsky what, was Melikon on a roll. looks like a guy who could drop down a weight class as well. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's carrying. And you, you see that the way that Melikon looks as a welterweight is the way Gastelum looked as at a middleweight. Like he's just, he's got extra mass on his frame that he, that he doesn't need. That's not effective. Well, you know, speaking of, you know, different fights here on the card, we're going to get into one of our favorite segments here. Uh, before we kind of wrap up our talk on UFC Fight Night 27, that again tomorrow night, starting at 5 p.m., so right now, we're going to break in to Joey V's Coach's Corner about the Donald cerrone Rafael Dos Anjos fight. Now, get inside the cage with a true warrior. It's Joey V's Coach's Corner.
Coach's Corner. I'm about to go to L.A., move to the hood, start boxing in the ghetto, just to get that eye on the tiger back, man. I love that song. That's right. Here we go. The Cowboy, Donald Cerrone, taking on Rafael, excuse me, Rafael Dos Anjos. Rafael, two angels. That's what Dos Anjos stands for, two angels. Anjos, not Anos as years, but Anjos as angels. So the Cowboy meets the angels. This is like one, the good angel on one shoulder and then the bad angel on the other because Cowboy is definitely that bad angel. Cowboy coming off of a, he had a knockout loss against Anthony Pettis. He came back against, uh, uh, against KJ Nunes. He didn't look that impressive. He looked kind of tentative. He needs to shake that in his fight. Taking on Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos isn't a big knockout puncher, but he's tricky and he's evasive and he does a lot of weird things that can throw an opponent off. You see him doing that against uh, Anthony and Jaquani, and who's a, who's a great stand-up striker, just like Cowboy. Very similar in the way they stand up. Um, and for what Cowboy needs to do is Cowboy needs to get out. Come out the gate. Don't respect those Anjos one bit. Get in his face. Press the action. Stay busy. Stay aggressive. Have bad intentions with everything you do. Do not let Rafael get in his rhythm. For Rafael, he's got to be slick and tricky. He does a great job of switching from southpaw to orthodox. And what he does a lot is as you come forward, he back up, backs up, and then he bursts in with something. And it's so hard to time that. It's so hard to counter that. It makes it very, very uh, uh, difficult to gauge what he's going to do or where he's going to do it from. And when a guy's switching from orthodox to southpaw, it makes it even harder. So he needs to stay mobile like that as Cerrone's weight coming in, came, coming forward, move from orthodox to southpaw, time offensive attacks just as Cerrone is about to plant and try to shut Cerrone down. Cerrone, don't let him get off. Don't respect him. Don't let him get any kind of flow. Don't let him wait on you. Just get in his face. Stay in his face. Grind, grind, grind. And for Cerrone as well, look for a takedown in there. Mix it up. Respect the ground game because Dos Anjos is very slick off bottom, but mix it up with those takedowns. Yeah, absolutely. And you know the that switching from Southpaw to Orthodox, that may mess with Cerrone. You saw what it did in the Pettis fight. Mm -hmm. Totally threw him off. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. And, and I'm telling you, Dos Anjos... He's not a guy you sleep on. No. Do not sleep on this guy. He is a monster. And it was really funny. I'm looking back last night, and I'm like, how did Campman Condit not win fight of the night? How did it not happen? Want to know why? Because Dos Anjos won it with uh, Tyson Griffin. And oh, Tyson Griffin did, though, using the wrestling, show the blueprint how to, to beat him. him. Well, I tell you what, uh, for Dos Anjos, this is undoubtedly the biggest shot he's, he's gotten so far. Th this could be a great, great fight for him. He's got that four-fight win streak. We're going to see a lot to play out tomorrow night. This card is actually starting to get more interesting the closer we get to it. But we're junkies, and but this real, is the fight. Quick, now, though, save your thought. We're going to come right back on the MMA Fight Corner. Don't go anywhere. Living in Las Vegas is great. Dealing with the desert heat is a challenge to us all, especially if you're an athlete. When you're training or exercising regularly, your body loses tons of water and electrolytes and can be very hard to get back in a short period of time. This is when you turn to the pros at Vita Heaven. Created and tested by Dr. Jason Burke, Vita Heaven can reinfuse your body with everything from B12 and high dose vitamin C to full scale performance hydration. Keep yourself performing at the highest level. Go to VitaHeavenLV.com. MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. On the all-new Sports 920. The game. The game. The game. All right, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner today. Not on Sports 920. The game we're preempted due to a little... Uh, 51's baseball, but that's okay. We are online and out of control. Joey V has been uh, has been dropping us knowledge and also been dropping us uh, some great sailor talk. Uh, but that's okay because you know what? We're on uh, we're online today. We we are totally uncensored. You want to hear something else funny? I do. I would love to. Uh, Michael Bisping says I could have KO'd Anderson Silva easily. That is hilarious. 
Okay, so I can tell he's smoking the same kind of stuff that we're smoking this morning, right? No, listen, right? since Anderson Silva has now lost, the, everyone's going to come out the woodwork and said, oh, if I would have fought him, it would have happened, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just, listen. But, I mean, Michael Bisping, all people are like, yo, pillow fists. I, I, Who the fuck have you knocked I, out? You know, and here's the thing. You can't even knock up your girlfriend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, you know what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do we've got? Do we have any fertility specialists we could bring on with us? Because I'm I, sure Dr. Burke does that. I'm too. sure he probably's got somebody that he <laughs> can. Go to heaven. I'm sure they do that. And they've got ViagraHeaven.com as well. You know, just get, just give them a ho- You know, give them a holler and they'll they'll take care of you. Like you know the 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 Cialis commercial. You know, Dr. Uh, Burke and his staff. Uh, you know, they can't make you any more attracted to your wife, but they can help you pretend for up to three Remember hours at a time. Remember when Cialis commercial first started? That time it was the Super Bowl and they started showing them, and there's just like two old people sitting in a bathtub on a hill and yeah. everyone's like what, what the hell, hell is are this? they selling here <laughs> i don't understand what this commercial is but for in the herpes commercials they went like kayaking and boating and everybody well, because was they want to they want to show you that <laughs> even with one of the nastiest fucking diseases that has plagued yeah. the humankind since time and memorial you can still get out there and be active let me tell you what bitch as soon as you tell getting. me you got the herpes I'm out. And actually, if you I'm told me that... I'm kicking you out of the kayak. You <laughs> got me. That's right. Out of the hot air balloon. I'm throwing you out. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm getting, like, the, the disinfectant wipes wherever you touched. Uh, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a step further. I will <sighs> report this to be a, a fishing and hunting accident and make sure <laughs> you drown. You tell me, baby, I got something to tell you. I've got the herpes. What? You say what? And that's it. I I'm hope so you off topic right now. So you off did. topic, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Gosh. Well, listen, you know, a lot of this has to do with nothing except for the fact that we are online out of control today. This is a web exclusive of the MMA Fight Corner, uh, but we have been getting to some great stuff. Uh, Joey, Phil, Heidi, and I have been breaking down uh, UFC Fight Night 27. That, of course, is going to be airing tomorrow night, starting on Facebook, then transitioning over to Fox Sports 2, then transitioning over to Fox Sports 1. Any more numbers with these stations, uh, we're going to be into a big problem, but it should be a great overall. Card. I know we were a little concerned about how exciting, but after hearing your Joey V's coach's corner, I'm really pumped now. I think that Cerrone fight could be the fight of the night. I, you know what, man? I, I gotta, I'm got i kind of bummed. I'm kind of pissed. I spent a long time with Cox yesterday, you know, because... I'm s- I, I, certainly <laughs> not surprised to hear that. <laughs> Actually, Lulu's Is it a Saturday time already? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I, on the phone, like trying to, you know, just figure out the, 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 the my cable situation because I had the most basic playing cable. Sure. And I, I wanted to upgrade, and I, you know, so I... I I talked about upgrading, you know, and g- give me a box and the thing, you know, with 200 channels. Like, yeah, so it's great. So I'm going to do it. And then I'm like, so I, that means I get Fox Sports 1 and 2, right? They're like, like, no. No, you got to buy the extended sports package. I'm like, fuck you, man. Really? Yeah. Bad. Guess what you don't need the extended sports package to see on our basic cable? World Series of Fighting on NBC Boom. Sports. And guess who else gets to show their pretty mug on World Series of Fighting, our very own Joey Varner. Now, if that just doesn't give you two great reasons to pick World Series of Fighting as your favorite up-and-coming fight promotion, I don't know what else does. But, guys, we've got a World Series of Fighting fighter now with us online. We've been talking about him uh, all morning long here on the MMA Fight Corner. This is Brandon Hot Rod Hempelman. Brandon, welcome to the Fight Corner. You've been hearing us uh, kind of outlandish today. Uh, I hope you're not too scared to join us now on the program. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing fantastic, man. So thanks for joining us. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your day. And I got to tell you, you have got a great website. You know that? BrandonHeppelman.com is, right. is a really clean website, dude. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just got that up and running a few months ago. I got, I got some stuff I got to do to it. Well, it looks great so far. Again, thanks for joining us. You've got Heidi Fang, Phil Devine, Joey Varner uh, with you here. So, Brandon... We, we heard that you've got some story that you want to kind of share with us here uh, about your last fight, World Series of Fighting. Why don't you open up it and tell the audience a little bit about that? Um, I've just been reading a lot of the stuff online, what they're, what they're saying about it, and uh, not, real, not real happy about some of the, some of the coverage the fight's been getting. As far as, like, I was reading one by, I think it was SB Nation had it up, the MMA Mania, saying that Marlon was merciful to me in the third round, and this and that, and I just it just put a real bitter taste in my mouth. Like I don't, I don't think that's the case at all. I think he uh, hit me with everything but the kitchen sink, and then I didn't go down, and he didn't have any more to offer. 
No, you, what you did, what in my eyes, was what defines heart and courage inside a cage. You totally went out there, like you told me in the interview that we had before your fight, that you were not going to be a boring fighter, and there was not an ounce of that fight that was boring, and there was absolutely nothing that you did, in my opinion, that was out of character from after we spoke. So I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, you know, I definitely wrote that you reminded me of Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew that I wasn't going to get out of that fight without getting, you know, ganged up. So I was, I was pretty prepared for that. And um, I did everything I said I was going to do. He didn't fight the way I thought he was going to fight. I mean, he was just as good as I thought he'd be. I mean, Marlon's a great fighter and had some killer kicks, but... I expected him to be moving forward more, and I wanted to push the pace forward on him as well. But when he started moving backwards, he made himself the counter striker and made me the aggressor and kind of took me out of my game a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of hard to be on the aggressor when you were hopping on one leg, but you you sure yeah, did it, it, man. It was impressive. <laughs> you, you're on one leg, blood pouring down your face, hopping after him. I'll tell you what, man. I haven't seen a display of heart like that in a long time. Yep. It, it was impressive. Well, the thing that really got me was like, yeah, I had I had one leg, and I had to chase him around. I mean, he actually broke my fibula in the fight, so I have a broken Whoa. leg and a oh, cast man. on right now. <clears throat> that happened uh, at the beginning of the second. Uh, I should have changed my stance, but I mean, hindsight's you know a little better. So, but uh, well, well, wait, wait. So he broke your fibula in the fight. When did did you like go for X rays right afterwards or was uh, it? I went and got drunk right afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now let me let me just throw this out here, Brandon. You open yourself up. If you go get drunk in Vegas, I want you to do me a favor. Call our friends at Hangover Heaven when you need to feel better the next day. These guys work with Joey Fighters around town. Makes you feel super super better. Hangover Heaven. Just remember that. Oh, I will. I will. I don't get a drink very often, but I definitely pour it on that night. There, you, there you go. Well, I think they even have preventative measures. They, they, they do. They've got little <laughs> packets. You can get preventative stuff. But, dude, we were talking about you before we had you on here and, and about that leg situation. We had no idea it was broken, but we were referring kind of to that great moment in Karate Kid when Ralph Macchio gets that, that bad kick to the leg and has to finish it out almost on a crane kick. And Phil was saying he half expected you to pull that move off in the fight because that's how epic that injury looked. When you are in the cage and you're fighting that way, you know you've got the, the TV focusing on you. You've got the crowd right there. You've got the president also in, in the crowd. How does that make your adrenaline rush up to finish that fight with a broken leg? Oh, it's hard to even explain the feeling. Like, that was the best, uh, best feeling I've probably ever had in my life, just the uh, endorphins and the emotions and the way everything, everything kicks in. I mean, it wasn't any pain. I mean, pain wouldn't be the way to describe it. I mean, it hurt every time I stepped. I could feel it. But it was more well, as a... Um, really desperate to finish that fight. I knew I could if I could get a hold of him, I could make something happen. The whole time, I, I never, uh, all I was thinking is I got to get closer, got to get closer. So with the injury and everything, uh, when do you think we could expect to see you back uh, in a cage, you know, booking a fight? Well, how long will it take? Um, I'm hoping to be as soon as possible. I mean, they said about six weeks until this thing, you know, I, I'm wearing a walking boot right now. First, uh -huh. they told me I had to have a full cast, which would have been kind of silly. Oof. But I'm, I'm in a walking boot now, and they said about, you know, I can I can walk in it with the boot on. So nice. I, another another couple of weeks, and I'm going to get back to doing some light drilling and some rolling and whatnot and see where it goes. But I'm open just a couple of months until I do another fight schedule. What, what did the people at World Series of Fighting, Ali, the matchmaker, and, and, Ray, and Ray Seffo there, what do they have to say to you after your fight? I actually haven't had a, a chance to really talk to Ali or Ray. Um, I mean, we, we tweeted back and forth a little bit. So, I mean, I think they were, they were happy with the, the way the fight turned out, I hope. I did everything I could. Um, but my manager's been doing most of the talking with them, and, I mean, he's just relaying messages. He says they're pretty happy and hoping to get me a fight soon. Who's your manager? Ross Jensen. He's also my uh, strength and conditioning coach. All right. I, I saw on, on your front page, I saw you have a picture with Tom Supnett. I didn't know if that was your manager. Yeah, Tom was managing me for a little while. I mean, we kind of had a little bit of a falling out over work ethics. Uh. Well, then never mind. I was like, <laughs> right, I'm cool with Tom. I know him for a while, but, but never mind. Screw him. <laughs> no, I, I like Tom. I don't, as a person, I, Tom's, Tom's a great guy. I just wanted somebody a little more of a go-getter. and I got sick of asking for help, getting sponsors, getting fights, and it's finally, you know, uh, I just decided to try something else, and it's worked pretty well so far.
How okay. hard is it getting sponsors when you know you're you're relatively unknown to the media and to a lot of a lot of the new fans to the sport? You know, a lot of times you don't fight in the UFC. No one really knows who you are. Um, how hard is it to get the sponsorship? Oh, it's very hard. I mean, locally, I just started dabbling in that before. Um, I could get some like local businesses to help out, you know, help with travel expenses. But to get real sponsors, I mean, I didn't even know where to start, so it's basically impossible. So, do you have a job? Um, I actually own an MMA gym in Twin Falls, here in Idaho, and then I uh, I work for my dad part time on his calf ranch, but and I coach gymnastics. I guess I have a few different. I was I was going to say you you've you've got many job, man. You've I got like a lot them. of job. <laughs> well, I like tree, you lazy man. <laughs> <laughs> I want a tree job. You <laughs> vacation from tree job. Uh, I, I I do like the gymnastics though. Uh, you know we've seen a lot of that with George Saint Pierre using gymnastics and. and just the diversity of the type of training it does and, and how it helps you in the cage. And I remember when we were talking about you going in there against Marlon, that was one of the standouts in my eyes, was the fact that you train gymnastics so much. How much does that help? Um, it's definitely helped me with the athleticism and, and that sort of stuff. I mean, the coordination, the athleticism. I definitely need a... I think once I get with the, the right team and get the right stuff going on, it'll, it'll help me even more. It definitely it helped. Helped pick stuff up quick. Yeah, and it helped with the balance too. I mean, for you to hop around chasing the guy on one leg, I mean, still throwing punches, still throwing still punches, still throwing it, kicks. it obviously helps. <laughs> hey, you yeah. just mentioned something about about when you get with a new team. Are, are are you looking for a new team right now? Are you planning on relocating, moving? Uh, uh, what's that process um, like? I'm planning on doing a little bit more traveling. I have a, a great team here locally, but it's apparent after that fight that I need to I need to branch out a little bit and get a little. I didn't have anybody like Marlon to spar or train for. I didn't really train specifically for Marlon. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I was, but after the fight, I mean, I can kind of see like I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for his Muay Thai style, so I definitely think I need to get out there and uh, find a little bit of a little bit of something else to go along with what I already got. Awesome. Well, it sounds great, man. Uh, listen, we wish you the very best of luck, and honestly, here on the MMA Fight Corner. You've gotten the opportunity to set the record straight, and we're behind you 100%. I mean, in no way, shape, or form is fighting anybody easy, but under the circumstances that you were performing, what a valiant effort. And again, best of luck in the future, man. Thanks so much for coming on and joining us on this web special of the MMA Fight Corner. All right, thank you, guys. All right, thanks so much. And, of course, uh, you can visit Hot Rod Hempelman's website at brandonhempelman.com. Uh, guys, what do you think? He does have a very interesting story and a really crucial point. None of us really recognized that he had broken his leg. Yeah, to, this is the first I'm hearing of it. I haven't heard anything about him breaking his leg. And, you know, I understand where, you know, some, some of the media may have led to believe that Morais was kind of let up on him and well, said, well, you know, you know I don't the, think so, though. You know, I you know what happened, though, actually? Uh, Morais, like, broke his foot. And I think his hand as well. And I, I think Marais threw everything at him and was just like, all right, this guy is still coming. Yeah. He's still coming. I can't finish him, you know? Yeah, no, I think it's it's one of those things where you, you look at how it's gone you know, through the history, it's going to go down as a loss, but everybody that watched it is going to remember it as a great and valiant fight. So, again, great stuff from Brandon Hempelman. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, our last great segment here on the web edition of MMA Fight Corner, really high history with Filthy Phil Devine, yeah. as well as a couple more hits than usual, possibly, from Heidi Fang. Stay tuned. Listen up, guys. Hangovers can now be a thing of the past. That's right. No more hangovers. Thanks to Dr. Jason Burke and Hangover Heaven. Dr. Burke and his staff of medical professionals have a clinically safe and proven method for curing even the worst hangovers. With a full range of treatments from vitamins and supplements to IV fluid replenishment and oxygen therapy, Hangover Heaven can cure your hangover. Get online right now. Hangoverheaven.com. Hangoverheaven.com. Or call 990-0660. 990-0660. And now, back to the MMA Fight Corner. Fight Corner. On the all-new Sports 920. The game. The game. Uh, yeah, welcome back into the MMA Fight Corner. Not on the all-new Sports 920, the game, but we will be rebroadcasting later, MMAFightCorner.com. Check us out on YouTube and on live stream 
I want to thank our guest, Brandon Hempelman. Brandon, the Hot Rod Hempelman. You can check out his website, uh, BrandonHempelman.com. Great stuff from him. World Series of Fighting fighter who broke his leg in his last fight. We did not know that, but a great fight nonetheless. So for Joey Varner, Heidi Fang, Phil Devine, I'm Dave Carney. We're going to be wrapping up a really fun, really fun show today. This has been a great time, guys. We've covered a lot of awesome fights. Of course, this Friday, we're going to have a big show back on Sports 920, the game. We're going to have great interviews. I believe we are going to be talking to Cyborg that's going to be fighting in Lion Fight 11 coming up September 20th. We're also going to be talking to Ryan Couture, I believe, is tentatively booked for the show. So big stuff for Friday. And then, of course, we're going to have Saturday's UFC 164 to talk about. Now, really, really quick, because I know we've got some Heidi's hit list and some This Week in Super High MMA History from Phil Devine. Let's talk about the UFC 164 main card only real quick, because I think the Henderson fight is going to be explosive. In his last fight, he showed me something that I just, I love the hair. It's like the Troy Palomalu of, of the MMA cage, and just very fun guy to watch fight. Dude, Benson Henderson versus Anthony Pettis, too. I mean, listen, the kick heard round the oh, world. Yeah. Uh, Heidi, how many times? I stopped counting at ten. <laughs> yeah, like they must have <laughs> shown that show. preview and that, like you know, uh, uh, highlights of that kick over and over. You so see it everywhere. Wrong. It'll it'll be forever etched in in your Yo. mind if you're a fan of the sport. I'm pretty sure everybody that was there that night, I, I, when it landed, that arena went silent. Imagine for if like a split second, it was completely quiet, and then it went crazy. No one believed what they saw. I sorry. Imagine if we had that <laughs> fandom cam. You know yeah, the one that they had cool. that's in the slow mo with that when that happened? Oh my god, oh my god. Think about this. I'm peeking out. <laughs> Since that time, how many other highlight reel stuff has he done with the cage? The double knee, the jump off. He did a cartwheel kick. He has a corkscrew thing. He does a corkscrew. Yeah. Like, I, I think that the, the, the Showtime highlight reel moves are going to be on full display in this fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be tough, though, because yeah. there was a blueprint laid by Clay Guida on how to beat Anthony Pettis. It's to blanket him, to grind him, to hold him down. Benson Henderson is a phenomenal wrestler. Um, you know, what happens if, if Benson tries to employ that same the same he, tactics? He did in the first fight, and it didn't work too well. Well, because Pettis was doing a great job of getting back up. Yeah, uh -huh, and yeah. then towards the end there, he like pretty much nilled out the takedowns in the fourth and fifth round. If I remember right, I think he just landed one at the end. He went three for ten or something. Yeah, overall, uh, this dude, it's going to be a really fun fight. Uh, and then the co-main event. Oh. Jo Josh Barnett back in the UFC. Thank you. Dude, <laughs> pants tight right now. Right? Okay. <laughs> Josh <laughs> Barnett is back in the UFC. And this is a fight, yeah, it's three, four, maybe even five years later than okay. I would have loved to have S seen it's it. It's still a great so fight. Yeah, when, you, when you think about the two best grapplers in the heavyweight yes. division, and you have Josh Barnett and Frank yeah. Mir, it, it's... it's well, just the names alone. I mean, this is kind of what we were talking about with what we got spoiled with on UFC Fight Night 26, the first one on Fox Sports 1, that it was a pay-per-view event. UFC 164, it is a pay-per-view event, and it is stacked. This is going to be some hot stuff. So I don't want to blow our load on 164 today because we're going to dedicate Friday. all of Friday's show uh, to UFC 164. So great stuff there. And again, thanks to Brandon Heppelman, a World Series of Fighter, for coming on and talking with us, kind of trying to set the record straight on what he thought was being misrepresented in the media and I can always sympathize uh, with that a little bit but right now Heidi the multiple hits bong hit hit list Vang we're gonna I get in I don't know what that is I don't know what you I don't, I don't, think, know you, I don't think you know what that is what except is. for in Colorado and Washington you don't know what that is but right now we are going to jump in to the news that everybody can use with Heidi's hit list <laughs> For the news from our reporter on the ground, it's time for Heidi's Hit List. World Series of Fighting 5. Since we had just spoke about it, let's start off the news with it. The card is now complete. They added a few fights to the undercard. We have Rick Glenn versus Arthur Rafi. Ozzy Deglublov versus Andrew, Andrew Ozzy Osbourne. And Sadmar Honorio takes on Jimmy El Terror. 
Rivera. And yes, those are real names. I did not make them up. You can see that live at Revel Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey on September 14th. Um, Bellator news. We have a featherweight title fight added to the Saturday, November 2nd pay-per-view. That's Pat Curran versus Daniel Strauss. That should be an amazing fight. Also, when Bellator cut the three remaining women on their roster, Jessica Evil Eye, which is probably one of the best nicknames in MMA. Love it. Assigned a multi-fight deal with the UFC. And she's already booked her first bout. That'll be versus Sarah Kaufman at UFC 166, October 19th. That'll be in Houston, Texas. Uh, Kaufman was actually supposed to fight on this card versus Sarah McMahon, but, uh, you know, McMahon dropped out due to undisclosed reasons, and Sarah was left without a replacement fighter, so the fight was scratched. Uh, Vitor Belfort versus Dan Henderson. That is set. It's inked. It's ready for UFC Fight Night 32 in Brazil. Uh, the lightning flash for that one because it is going to be that <laughs> exciting. Um, Belfort vs. Henderson will headline the event slated for November 9th and is scheduled to be a five-round light heavyweight fight. UFC Fight for the Troops 3 has added a surefire battle when we will see two ultimate fighters go head-to-head. -head. That includes Michael Chiesa, the ultimate fighter live winner versus ultimate fighter 16 winner, active duty Army Ranger Colton Smith. Also confirmed a featherweight collision between Nick Lentz and Dennis Bermudez. Also, um, that will be headlined by Leota Machida versus Tim Kennedy, also an active Army uh, active. Army, Army Sergeant. He, w he was something in the military. He did <laughs> something we talked about I earlier. Said it, I we, said we won't judge him for his service. That's fine. And that, my friends, is the news. Hey, that is some great news. And I tell you what, I love it when Machida's on a fight card. Again, really, really fun guy to watch fight. Always excited about that. Um, you know what? Uh, and uh, if you haven't uh, seen it, look up Dana White's Twitter timeline. There's a uh, a little incident between him and Kevin Ioli the oh, other day. Really? Uh, last yeah, yeah, last week Dana had said that they were not hiding Vitor in Brazil. Well, yeah, it's a little you know uh, if you're not hiding him, why is he only fighting in Brazil? But Kevin Ioli made the mistake of calling Dana and Lorenzo shady about it. Whoa! -oh. And Dana just went off, off. On Kevin Ioli. And, you know, listen, Ioli has a point. Well, if he, you're not hiding him in Brazil, why, why are you hiding him in Brazil? Brazil? Right, yeah, good point. But you don't call Dana White in the UFC well, shady. I was going <laughs> to say, doesn't Kevin Ioli work for the UFC kind of now? And Dana was like, uh, Dana was furious. He's like, I've been so fucking good to you. Yeah. You know, be a real fucking reporter oh, and boy. pick up the phone. You know, like, eh, so eh, you don't. You don't call out the UFC well, like that. So I mean, yeah, you just don't ever bite the hand that feeds you, and especially if it's a guy that's feeding you all the great stuff. And, yeah, and, and that's why we love every single one of our PR contacts. Kevin Ioli has a front, ah, front and center seat every seat press conference. With his name on it, and I don't. Yeah, you know, I, so I'll like... It. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? Dana likes you better, so that's fine. <laughs> Dana likes Heidi a little too much. Yeah, for, all right, well, listen, I want to <laughs> slip that in since we're talking about slipping in and slipping out of some hey, fun hey, stuff. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, about that. Let's talk about slipping Slip it into this week in MMA history. It's super high with Phil Devine. Check out the big brain on Phil. Now, here's the biggest brain in the biz, Phil Devine, with this week in MMA history. Drunk. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Uh, it's it's high story today. High story. It is eleven o'clock in the morning, and I'm sorry, I'm not. You're not lunch. drinking that all. I can't okay. drink this early, but um, pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. What a a, I, I will not. You know, like Joey said, I this, is, this, is a, this is a work thing, man. You need to pull up your bootstraps and get fucked up. Well, that's why I just, <laughs> that's why I packed the five-footer on my way here. That's right. Good I, I got all nice and ready for the show. And, you know, I'm looking at, at this week in MMA history, and there was an, one of the reasons that I couldn't do it drunk was because of the fact that there was quite uh, an amazing few events that, that took place. And one of them that I want to go back to is I wish mixed martial arts took here in America the way it did in Japan in the early part of uh, the 2000s. August 28, 2002, Pride Shockwave. It was their first Shockwave event. Over 91,000 people 
attended the event held at the Tokyo National Stadium in Japan. It was a mixed martial arts and kickboxing event co-promoted by Pride and K1. They had an amazing opening ceremony where you had Hilo Groisi and Japanese wrestling sensation and legend Antonio Inoki. They took an um, Olympic-style torch. They had a big one, and they both went up, and they lit it. Big, giant open ceremony. Um, um, it was just an amazing spectacle to see. But that night, Vanderlei Silva opened the evening, destroying Tetsuya Iwasaki in a little more than a minute. In his one and only K-1 kickboxing rules fight, Don Fry got knocked unconscious by Jerome LeBanner early JLB. in the first round. And if you look, that was one of those knockouts. Like, it was up against the ring post, and he hit him with two shots, and Fry just slid down completely unconscious. Nasty. He never fought K-1 rules again, by the way. Um, in a special attraction grappling match, Hoist Gracie took on Hihiko Yoshida. The match ended in a very controversial fashion when the referee declared Yoshida the winner when Hoist never tapped, never went unconscious. There was no reason for them to stop the fight. Obviously, a big melee ensued. The Gracie clan went nuts. It was a total shitstorm. And it was probably the only black eye on the event, in my opinion. Uh, also that night, one of the greatest heavyweight fights that I've ever seen, Big Nog against Bob Sapp. Now, we all know what's happened to Bob Sapp over the years and the joke that he's become. But when this guy first came into Pride, he was an absolute world beater. And he beat the living shit out of Big Nog. I... I, I don't think I've ever seen someone take that much abuse. Pile driver. Pile driver. <laughs> he got power bombed, you know, a la ramp. It wasn't as nasty as rampages to Arona, but he got power bombed. He took some of the nastiest shots of ground and pound in the world, came back, though, submitted him. It was insane. And also that night, we really got to see the power of Mirko Krokop. In the main event, Krokop took on Sakuraba and broke Sop Sakuraba's orbital bone from the bottom. Sakuraba was on top, laying some ground and pound, laying the pipe. Lay, laying the pipe. And, and Apparently Kro that didn't go over so well. And Krokop <laughs> broke his orbital bone from the bottom. That just showed the power that so Krokop does that mean has. So does that mean he's like a Sasquatch? Because earlier, Phil, you were talking about Sasquatch hunters need to be raped viciously by the Sasquatch. Yeah, would, no, that, I, would that have broken an orbital bone, too? I, that'll oh, break, you want, you want to see me else. coming? I'll break that'll your break orbital bone. Else. Bam. <laughs> wow, that's Do I have uh, time for another? Or oh, no? oh, give us another. All right. Why, why All right. not, Phil? Well, it's, we're it's talking about pride. Sure. We're talking about pride, and we're talking about what a badass Bob Sapp was back in the day. And I know that just sounds so... It's like an oxymoron <laughs> it right does, there. Yes, it does. Bob Sapp yeah. is a badass, is a total oxymoron. But in Pride 2005's final conflict, we got to see the true meaning of the word badass. It was the finals of the 2005 Middleweight Grand Prix. Plus, there was also that match with Fedor and Krokop that everyone was waiting for. So it was a pretty good event. Uh, Fedor ended up winning an unanimous decision. It wasn't as exciting as a, f a fight that was expected but it still was definitely a great fight the tournament is what stood out in 2005's grand prix the it started with 16 of the best middleweight fighters in the world five months earlier and it concluded that night with the semifinals and the finals you had ricardo arona vanderlei silva alistair overeem and the tournament's youngest competitor shogun hua were all that remained in the semifinal matchup silva took on ricardo arona to get there, the axe murderer had beaten the Japanese fighters Yoshida and Nakamura. Arona's path saw him taking out Dean Lister and Sakuraba leading up to it. In what was a major upset, Arona took a unanimous decision over, uh, over champion at the time. He was the middleweight champion, Vanderlyn Sil Silva. Didn't lose the belt, though, because it was a two-round fight. Uh, the win actually sent Arona to the finals, and the loss was the first that Vanderlei suffered at 205 pounds in over five years. The second semifinal fight was Alistair Overeem and Shogun. Overeem submitted both Vitor Belfort and Igor Vochanchin in, uh, in the first two fights to get to the finals. Shogun made his way to the semifinals by stopping Rampage Jackson in devastating fashion and taking unanimous decision over Little Nog. Who was the underdog in both of those fights, and the scrap with Little Nog was widely considered the fight of the year by many, including myself. Uh, against Overeem, Hua survived an early onslaught to come back and get a TKO win, setting up him and Arona in the finals. And in the finals, Hua needed less than three minutes to absolutely destroy 
Ricardo Arona and become the 2005 Pride Middleweight Champion. And I remember it clearly, Mauro Ranales saying this was the coming out party for Shogun Hua. And it truly was. I mean, he did lose his next fight <laughs> to like Mark Coleman party. <laughs> for, for the broken, <laughs> arm. broken but, arm. But have you noticed that that happens a lot when someone touts like this is the new era? Oh, Remember yeah. the Machia era? era? Yeah. It's sometimes, it, you know, it, 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 a little, um, little premature. But Shogun at that time, it was like his fifth fight in pride or fourth fight in pride when he entered into the tournament. Complete underdog, youngest guy. No one expected him to win, and he tore through it like a hot knife through butter. Well, he I hasn't physically or performance wise <laughs> looked anything like the, that the, again. The next fight he had was with Coleman, where he broke his arm, and ever since then, he's been injury, you know, riddled for his career. Well, I tell you, that sometimes is the the way that the cookie crumbles. And I think we would have to dedicate a full entire hour to this week in drunk MMA history if Phil had his way. So we're going to have to be careful what we wish for. You mean I can get high every show? Because we just might get it. That was great stuff. Guys, this has been a really, really fun program. Again, thanks very much to Brandon Heppelman for coming on the show, joining us today. It's been a wild and crazy one. Please don't hold anything against us. We'll be back to normal fighting fashion on Friday on Sports 920 The Game, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Until then, catch up with us on MMAFightCorner.com. We'll see you guys soon.